Welcome to the University of Florida College of Medicine Ultrasound Module, Basic Cardiac Pathology. This is module number three. And today you will learn uh, how to evaluate ejection fraction using ultrasound. You'll also learn how to evaluate for a pericardial effusion and possible tamponade. And you'll learn how to evaluate for valvular abnormalities using Doppler. So you just learned about the cardiac cycle in class and this is the very classic diagram that shows all the curves, pressure, volume, um, heart sounds. It's pretty pretty overwhelming when you initially look at it but we're going to try to help you out by showing you a live ultrasound image of your heart so it maybe helps you to to better understand the relationships between uh, the pressure and the volume and all the movements uh, of the valves during the cardiac cycle. And as you um, look at your diagram, take a look at the ultrasound picture when you can try to break down uh, the cycle in systole and diastole. You can look at the valves, how they open and close, um, how the ventricle contracts, and you can try to uh, put all the pieces together. You have uh, numerous ways of uh, calculating ejection fraction with formulas um, in the lab, but we're going to use some visual cues uh, when we look at ultrasound. We're going to look at left ventricular wall thickening, left ventricular cavity size, cavity size change, and valve opening. You should have left ventricular wall thickening of about 40%. The muscle should really be uh, working. Also, we're going to look at the left ventricle cavity size. It shouldn't be more than six centimeters. This heart is not really doing a lot of things. You can see the ventricle, it's quite enlarged. So we're going to go ahead and measure it 6.2. That's quite abnormal. So it, the cavity should also reduce about 40 to 50%. You should really make a note and uh, evaluate how it's uh, contracting during systole. There we have a picture, one that is not contracting as much, we could actually do M mode and measure it, and uh, the computer gives us a f ejection fraction. Valve should open fast and wide. You want to see that mitral valve really hitting that interventricular septum as an indicator of you know, good um, cardiac contractility. Let's talk about a pericardial effusion now. You have the heart, you know, that sits within the pericardial sac. And that's a potential space uh, for trouble. You know, let's review the properties of free fluid. It's anechoic, it has sharp angles, and it's dependent. So it should move around if you move your patient. The anatomy, we're going to review. Right ventricle. And the descending aorta plays an important part with the pericardium. It is going to let us evaluate if it's pericardial effusion. Here you see the heart and you see kind of an anechoic stripe in relation to the descending aorta. So you see the free fluid above the aorta, we can call it a pericardial effusion. This other patient, as you can obviously see, the heart is surrounded by fluid. Uh, you have the descending aorta there, a little bit harder to see, but you do see the free fluid. Now let's talk about tamponade and let's look at the heart here in the subcostal view. You see the liver, the right ventricle with the right atrium, and the left ventricle and the left atrium in the bottom. And when you do have an effusion, uh, you can have a tamponade effect. And uh, in this case, we're going to see the same view, but note how the heart is surrounded by fluid, and you cannot even see the right ventricle. So there is this collapse of the right ventricle and the right atrium. That's indicative of tamponade. In ultrasound. If we look at the four chamber apical view, now we're going to see that there is right ventricular collapse and right atrial collapse, also indicative of tamponade. And if the inferior vena cava, which should be collapsing, is not collapsing due to the increased pressure, also another sign of tamponade. The rate of accumulation is more important than the amount. Some people with chronic effusions may actually accumulate a large amount of fluid, but the literature says that um, 
uh, about 150 ml of fluid are sufficient to cause tamponade. Again, it's the rate of how fast you're having the fluid. A trauma patient with a stab wound to the chest is not going to do as well as somebody with a chronic effusion. If you have a collapse, those are signs of tamponade. Let's talk about valvular pathology now. We have our four chamber apical view. Uh, we're going to put some colored Doppler so we can uh, learn about direction of flow. Red means flow towards your transducer. Blue means flow away from your transducer. In this case, uh, you can see the color blue moving from the left ventricle to the left atrium. So it's moving away from the transducer, but it's moving in the opposite direction. It should be from the atria to the ventricles. So this is a clear sign of mitral valve regurgitation. And you can learn about flow using the Doppler. On the right side, you have normal flow. And on the left side, the mitral regurgitation. So today you've learned how to evaluate for normal ejection fraction using your ultrasound. We also looked at the pericardial effusion and a little bit of tamponade. We also had an introduction on valvular problems in the heart using the color Doppler to evaluate flow. So that's it for basic cardiac pathology, module three. Hope you had a good time. See you in the lab.